Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we talk about any and everything there is to talk about to have a better life every day. Stay tuned. So, today's video is brought to you by ta -da, Fulton Park. Um, so I'm out here just feeling bright, looking bright, and just doing it. Just doing it. So, what I try to do is do my walk and clear my head. And as thoughts come, I try to pay attention to the most powerful thoughts. And usually that's the thought of the video. So today's video, oh, I think today's video is what if I could talk to my younger self. Stay tuned. So, what if we could go back to whatever year you want to go back to? And what if we can do things differently? What if we actually had that opportunity? What would you do? And I think that that's going to be, I already did a journal entry today, but I think that'll be my second journal entry. What would I do if I could go back? what would be different and i think that you have to be honest with yourself because some of the stuff we probably would still do the same and then at the same time some of the trials and tribulations we might um learn a re an appreciation for it because now we understand that those experiences helped us become as awesome as we are today you know so many of us are out here and I keep saying it, so many of us, men and women, kids, whatever, we're out here and we're hurting, but we're hurting in silence. Um, if we're honest with ourselves, we feel defeated. And I just keep thinking like, how can we change this narrative? How can we move forward? What can we do? How can we reposition ourselves for success? So there's a few things that I want to talk about. I'm not sure. Um, I don't want the video to be too long because you know how I get. But um, so I'm not exactly sure like how many topics we'll cover. But we'll just kind of tackle one thing at a time. And if we have to do another video, then that's what we're going to do. All right. So the first topic would be <sighs> education is important. Um, I always believed that education was important. And I think that that has been part of my success because even though I had my oldest at 17, I never let that stump my growth and I never let that stop me from going back to school to reach the highest level that I could reach. Um, but then I felt like um, once the kids got older, I started to uh, get complacent, even though I know I never reached my ultimate goal that I had set for myself. So, when I was younger, I mean, who didn't want to be like Mrs. Claire Huxtable? I just knew I was going to be a lawyer, and you just could not tell me anything. But when I got pregnant, I knew that... Um, not that that wasn't an obtainable goal, but at that time, with the way things were going, I knew that that wasn't going to be um, like realistic in that moment. But it it could all, always be something that um, I could revisit later. So what I did was, I went to school for. I think I went to school. First of all, I don't went to school so many times I can't even really keep up. But I went to school for CNA. I think first because that was like going to be my quick fix because I knew that I can get um, my certificate in a matter of months and be working and to be a responsible parent because um, technically I have been uh, relied on to make big girl decisions <clears throat> since I was um, 16 um, 
did I always make the best decisions? No, but I did try to do the best that I could do for that moment. So I did go to school for CNA, and then um, I also went to school for, uh, what do you call it, medical dental office assistant or whatever. And I forget which one I did first, but I never really worked in that. Um, and then as I was doing CNA, um, I met someone, and I can't even remember who it was, because, you know, I'm always talking to people. But we had this conversation about um, paralegal. So I went to school to be a paralegal. And when I tell you that lasted two weeks, that lasted two weeks because um, I didn't like the attitudes of the lawyers. And I, <laughs> I just was like, mm-mm, this ain't gonna work for me. So moving along, I worked for two weeks for this attorney. And I was like, oh no, gotta go back to school. So started talking to some of the nurses at um, the nursing home and they had encouraged me to go back to school for LPN. So that's what I did. I, um, morning, I went back to school uh, for LPN and worked at that for a little while. Then I got pregnant with my young one and let me see, I had him in 2003. By 2005, was it? Two, I think it was 2005, I graduated with my associates in nursing. Um, and then shortly after that, I just was, something came over me and was like, listen, you need to get your bachelor's. And so I remember talking to my coworkers at the time and we all teamed up and I was like, listen, we gotta go back to school because something's about to happen and we need to be prepared for it. So would you believe the year I graduated, I think it was, you see, this is sad. I gotta look at my resume. I think it was either 2012 or 2013. Graduated with my bachelor's. And then all of a sudden, my job came around with this assessment tool to assess to see who was what. Like who was associates, who was bachelor's, who was what. And the whole point of that was because they no longer um, wanted to have an associate degree nurse so lo and behold you know your girl was hyped like ha see I was in tune with the spirit and I uh, didn't have to stress out at the last minute but a lot of my co-workers had to stress out at the last minute and make some decisions like are you going back to school or are you not so now I am dealing with um, the same feeling of I just need more and sometimes we let student loan debt kind of run the world for us but sometimes you have to just kind of step out in faith and just believe that your return of investment will be so much more than that debt that you have to incur um, at that time so right now I am brainstorming because I think it's time to go back to school um, especially with my young one leaving the house and I just feel like I just have so much time um, on my hands and I don't want to be stagnant and I don't want to be complacent and I love learning and I just feel like I'm at a place where in order to learn more I'm gonna have to learn more and uh, go back to school and even if it's a certificate, a degree, whatever, we'll see, but I'll keep you posted. But that, that's point number one. Point number two has to be love yourself. Um, love yourself, um, which is hard because as a young girl, I don't feel like anybody was really putting in that attention to love themselves. So like my mom was too busy work and my parents were too busy working and I think that um a lot of times especially if your parents work like second shift a lot of times you were just on your own and you just started picking up habits of the family and you just felt like this is how it goes this is how it's supposed to go and there was really no I don't know like I was just never into like self-care type of stuff 
probably because I didn't really know much about it. Like, never did like facials or all I know was they always said put on Vaseline or, you know, make sure you lotion up, stuff like that. But actually, like, take, oh, my mother would say, drink your water so you could have good skin. I didn't always listen. Um, but I do try. And sometimes with these masks, COVID uh, got us out here looking crazy. We, you know, because we're sweating and stuff. One day, okay, now, one day, had in order to put on some lipstick. I was so triggered. It was all over the mask. I'm like, no, over it, done. But, you know, love yourself. And within, so loving yourself is an umbrella. Under that umbrella, we have to learn to respect ourselves and respect our bodies. I always remember, um, like, working out. Um, but I wasn't working out as a form of self-love. I was working out to look cute and unfortunately no matter the morning no matter um what i did i just never felt cute enough and i think it's because like i really didn't get compliments or i, I don't even know the way to say it but it's just um it's compliments i think i didn't get enough of that and i really because I think I was like a self-motivated kid. And for the most part, I wasn't going to get into trouble um, by choice. And I was usually making good decisions or whatever. So I felt like a lot of people just felt like, oh, I don't got to worry about her. So there was really not much of like trying to teach me the right way. Because I think maybe it was just assumed that I automatically knew the right way. Um, but in that respect level, I feel like I wish I knew the importance of like working out and how if you move it now, <laughs> you might not lose it later. And a lot of times that's why I get excited out here, especially on the trail. When I see older people like 80 plus and they're out here running circles around me, I just get so hyped and excited because I totally, I get it. I totally understand that mobility is medicine. And a lot of times when I don't want to come out here, that's the main time I make myself come out here. Now, unless my schedule is just so hectic and you know, y'all know I do 12 hour shifts. So sometimes it's just not feasible, <clears throat> but definitely on my day off, I used to rip and run to the point where there was no no time for me and I don't do that anymore and that's also the reason why I got a smaller car because I also didn't want to fall back into the trap of being an uber or a delivery person you know like sometimes I just felt like I was a whole moving company you know and it's just time to do better so um, definitely wish I knew the importance of my health and a lot of adults that we look at now and they're in great shape some of them kind of learn the importance of health your health is your wealth as kids and they just never um lost the healthy habits that they learn but then on the flip side we have so many men and women um in the retirement age that are out here looking phenomenal. And it's also because some of them have sacrificed their lives for, you know, for the kids, for the family, and they have lost themselves. And um, once these kids like graduate college or move out or start having kids of their own, not that they forget about you, but they have their own lives. And now you no longer have that, um, that person relying on you or depending on you to do this and that. So you start to feel like it's you versus you. And I think that's kind of also what empowered me to start uh, this YouTube channel because I understand that it's me versus me. 
but at the same time I know I'm not the only one out here struggling with myself um, so and I know that I have uh, like the gift of motivating and encouraging and I think it's because I'm transparent in the moment and a lot of times people feel like their situation is so much worse than mine and I cut them off and say are you kidding me I've been there you know I might not be there today but I've been there so you know your health is your wealth and we need to do whatever we need to do to maintain that um some of, it could be water it could be what we're choosing to eat and I will say this there is no one size fit all I feel like all of us you know you talk to people everybody's like oh you got to be vegan oh you got to be keto oh you got to be low carb oh you got to be this you got to be that I'm telling you the truth there's no one size fit all um sometimes you have to do trial and error just to see which one gives you the best results and I'll also say that sometimes one diet will give you the best results and then once you get there and start plateauing you'll learn that you need to switch it over to another diet and that's fine because do what you need to do for you and one of the biggest points I would like to make is self-respect is mandatory um, a lot of us are out here behaving in disrespectful ways towards ourselves, and therefore we invite disrespectful energy to stay in our lives um, a lot of us are are or have been um, in toxic relationships and sometimes that's a result of us being toxic to ourselves now I say us because like I told you I can't act like I'm perfect um, you know <laughs> been there done that uh, like I said for almost 42 years of wisdom over here so I'm just trying to move smarter moving forward um, some of us were in toxic relationships and we didn't even know that it was toxic some of us were in toxic relationships and we thought it was all the other one and guess what sis it might have been you because now I'm learning that what energy I bring to the table is the energy that other people bring to me so if toxicity is just spiraling and keep happening I gotta check myself because what am I doing that makes this other pe this other person feel like this is going to be allowed um, so I think that in self-respect we have to figure out who we are and especially as teen moms unfortunately you got to work a little harder because depending on how old you were when you had these kids um, your maturity may have started but at the same time your maturity may have stopped because um, there's levels to this thing and sometimes um, they're like as a mom I thought I was doing a good job and I still think I was doing a good job because I was very like mature and responsible but there's other areas that were immature that I had no idea because like I told you I was only 17 like how much can you really think like you we thought we knew it all like you couldn't tell me nothing because I was the best babysitter so I got this under control no you're still missing some stuff and that's why you have to be careful who you surround yourself around make sure you have older friends um, make sure you have friends your age that are trying to do stuff like I tell my kids all the time be careful of your circle and you should always have at least one or two people in your circle that are outdoing you and not outdoing you in competition purposes but like outdoing you so that therefore you could see that there's hope that oh okay if he or she could do it I know I can do it too or align yourself with somebody who's already doing what you want to do and reach out to them like people people are more than willing to help you but some people feel like you're not approachable and they're waiting for you to kind of pull them to the side and ask the necessary questions so that you can get whatever it is you're trying to get so 
we got to stop acting like it's almost like passive aggressive if you need help say you need help and stop acting like you need help but not saying you need help and then you're getting upset because help is not coming you have to be you have to have an inviting energy there's so many of us who are not approachable but yet we can't understand why things don't go our way or why people are not just knocking down the door to help us because you're not approachable some of us need a um attitude adjustments like we really have to check ourselves and that's why i like to journal because <laughs> when i tell you i'm brutally honest with myself i'll be like you know you should be shaming yourself and that's the thing like and some of us like we can get into disagreement with people but how many of us can really admit in that moment what they brought to the table that was wrong as well a lot of times we're like oh no but she did this he did that blah 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 i'll tell you in a minute yeah he or she did this but i did this and it could have triggered that but uh i'm just telling you the truth so self-respect is important also with within self-respect um we need to be wiser with choosing relationships so some of us um needed to be wiser in choosing relationships especially when there's when you have kids because unfortunately some of us um get involved in these relationships and we forget that these kids are watching us and we also forget that what they watch they will repeat and what i mean by that is what are we teaching our daughters what are we teaching our sons um like if you have daughters you're teaching her this is how this is how we move <laughs> this is what's acceptable this is what's not acceptable if you have boys you're teaching them you can continue this behavior or you know we're, we're going to tolerate disrespect or you need to treat your partner with respect you know it just depends it, it's positives and negatives to everything and i feel like some of us um some of us leveled up when we had kids and we were we matured and we were able to make um better decisions just off the strength of having kids and then some of us didn't level up we got stuck and we forgot that these kids were watching so self-respect is important and not throwing shade because like i said i know i haven't always made great decisions but the key to success is to try to make the best decisions that you can make um when you can um and to acknowledge when you didn't and you you have to be brutally honest with yourself <laughs> And say, yeah, I dropped the ball there. That, that was all me. That was all me. That's what I wanted to do. Didn't work. Whatever. But self-respect is important. And last for today, but not least. Um, how do I want to say it? Um, do what's best for you. Do what's best for you. Stop feeling like. You have to cater to everyone's needs. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about um, you don't got to take care of your kids and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about a lot of us become bitter because we've sacrificed ourselves. And this is men and women. We've sacrificed so much of ourselves to either make someone else happy, to either... Uh, push them to accomplish their goals to the point where we forget about ourselves and once we've forgotten about ourselves we it's almost like we put this other person on a pedestal without realizing it and because we put them so high we got these high expectations that this other person doesn't even know that they need to meet and so when like let's say let's say i'm pushing you to finish school but you don't never finish school <laughs> but yet i've sacrificed all this stuff 
to get you to this point that you're not getting to now i'm bitter and then you're looking at me like but i never told you like i never really wanted to go to school i was just going to school because you wanted me to go to school and da, 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 da. and that's why i tell you too all of us people are only going to do but so much of what they want like they have to want to do it a lot of us it's not really pretending but it is pretending because we pretend to want to make a change or we pretend to want to do this new thing and that's not really the truth like it might be the truth for that moment or at least that's the truth that you believe in that moment but the fact that you're inconsistent in that area shows that there's some signs of i don't think this is really what you want to do or i don't think this is really what you believe um that needs to be done so do what's best for you and that could be on all different levels that can be um you know how they say protect your peace do what you have to do to protect your peace if you have to limit your um encounters with some people to protect your peace then that's what you do um if if you want to go back to school go back to school let's stop making decisions based off of what someone else will approve or won't approve or won't understand because at the end of the day we are trying to fulfill what we are trying to fulfill we're all here for a reason and a purpose and my goal is when i leave i want to be empty i want to be able to say that i've used everything that i was given and i reached my max potential on all levels so when somebody else tells me it don't take all that for you that might be true but i gotta get out here and do everything that i feel is necessary and sometimes we're dealing with emotions because we're not out here doing what we feel is necessary and now is the time especially in my life where i need to pause reassess am i doing everything that i wanted to do Am I doing everything that I need to do? Um, and what I want to do, will it negatively affect anyone? Because you have to pay attention to that too. Like you can't just out here, you can't just be out here being reckless because that's what you want to do. But you know, some of us want to do, some of us want to change careers or you know, whatever, I don't know. Like it could just be anything. And we're not doing it because we're waiting for someone's approval or we're not sure how someone will feel about it. But we're also becoming bitter because we're not fulfilling our own desires. And now is the time to get it together, do what you want to do, um, you know, but be mind, you know, be mindful. Like I said, don't be out here just reckless with it but if you're trying to do something to better yourself anybody who can't support that does not need to be in your life period and i think a lot of us um we care too much about what other people think how they're gonna you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because at the end of the day your happiness is what it's all about so you have to figure out what do i need to do to be happy and I'm gonna tell you, I've been asking myself this for a couple years now. And it's to the point where, like my happiness is simple. As long as my peace is protected, I'm happy. As long as I'm outside, I'm happy. Um, as long as my kids are okay, I'm in good health. I have mobility. Like it's simple for me. I never allow material things to uh, make me happy um, and then as far as like education goes I think that we should never stop learning now I'm not saying everybody needs a PhD degree I'm not even saying that everybody needs a degree I'm not even saying everybody needs to go to college however you do need to do whatever you have to do to keep learning 
And for a lot of us, that school of some sort, it could be trade, it could be, it could be an online certificate. I really don't care, but you have to keep learning. Um, or else you're gonna fall behind. Cause you see the way the world is going. Like we're lucky we know how to do Facebook and Instagram. Ain't no telling what's coming on the scene in the next 10, 20 years. Like we're gonna have to be able to keep up. That's why I got an Instagram. Cause I said, these kids, they're not gonna leave me behind. And I'm out here, I, I walk. Once in a blue, I run when the spirit hit. Um, but mostly walk because I just want to keep my mobility and I just want to live my best life uh, for a long time because I don't want to be a burden to nobody. I don't even want to be a burden to myself. You see, we all have problems with asking for help. So how do you think you're going to ask for help when you really need help, like physically? Yeah, okay. So I'm just out here trying to do the best I could do. One day at a time, one decision at a time, and that's all I have for today. There's so much more that I need to tell my younger self, um, and maybe I'll do more videos in the future to cover those topics, but like I said, I just want to do better so I can help others do better so that collectively we can do better. So until next time, continue to walk in integrity and learn your worth so that you'll know your worth so that you can walk in it. See you next time. Bye.